Wake, oh, wake, Zion. Tonight, tonight your Savior is born. This dark night in Bethlehem, the skies are full of angels. Sing hallelujah, hallelujah, shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Greetings, Liberty Church, and welcome to this fourth Sunday of Advent, Christmas Eve, which lands on a Sunday, so we're all here uh, excited to get going. It's my privilege to lead us in the first part of our service with the help of some very special guests, uh, beginning with Ainsley. Um, so would you please stand now and receive this welcome and this, sorry, this call to worship found on page one of your bulletin. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have gotten him victory. Unto us is born this day a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. The Lord has made known his victory. He has revealed his vindication in the sight of the nations. Unto us is born this day a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joy's song and sing praises. Unto us is born this day a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Unto us is born this day a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. Please remain standing now as I say a prayer of invocation. This is from St. Augustine and myself. How you loved us, O oh good Father, who spared not even your only Son, but gave him up for us. How you loved us. You whose Son deemed it no robbery to be your equal, yet for our sake was made subservient, even to the point of becoming a child, even to the point of dying on the cross. Alone on this earth, Jesus was free among the dead, for he had power to lay down his life and power to retrieve it. For our sake, he stood to you as both victor and victim, and victor because victim. 
For us, he stood to you as priest and sacrificed, and priest because sacrificed. As your son, he became a son of man. And in living and dying and rising among us, he made us your sons and daughters instead of your servants by being born of you in order to serve us. With good reason, we have solid hope in him because you will heal us of all our infirmities through him who sits at your right hand and intercedes for us. Were it not so, we would despair. Many and grave are those infirmities, many and grave, but wider reaching is your healing power. We might have despaired, thinking your word remote from any conjunction with humankind had the word of God not become flesh and made his dwelling among us. The Psalms of David called on God to rise and awake. The New Testament apostles never call on you, God, in this way. For in Christ, God is awake. In the Son of Man, we will find the Son of God. In the darkness of night, there is light, a light that will never go out. A mother is with a child, and the world has its new beginning. So declares St. Paul to us, awake, O sleepers, arise from the dead, and Christ shall give you light. And may we now join in singing of this great, great truth on page two. Angels we have heard, don't I? Greatly singing over the plains. Welcome mountains in reply. Echo back their joyous strain. A decree went from Caesar Augustus that the whole empire should be registered. This first registration took place while um, Quirinius was governing was governing Syria. So everyone went to be registered in each to his own town. Joseph also went up from town the town Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David, to be registered along with Mary, who was engaged. Oh, which is called Bethlehem, because he was the house and the family line of David, to be registered along with Mary, who was engaged to him and was pregnant. While they were there, the time came for her to give birth. She gave to her her firstborn son, and she wrapped him tightly in cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Oh, holy night, the 
stars are brightly shining. It is the night of the dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin. same region shepherds were staying out in the field and keeping watch at night over their flock then an angel of the lord stood before them the, and the glory of the lord shone around them they were terrified but the angel said to them don't be afraid for look i proclaim to you good no news of great joy that will be for all the people today in the city of david a savior was born for you who is the messiah the lord this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped tightly in cloth and laying in a manger. Suddenly, there is a multitude of heavenly hosts with the angel, praising God, saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, 
and placed on earth in his favor, people in his favors. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may remain seated now as we sing the next hymn. It came upon a midnight clear, that glorious song of old. An angels hymning near the earth to touch their harps of gold. Peace on the earth, goodwill to men from hands of gracious King. The world in solemn stillness lay. Cloven skies they come with peaceful wings unfurled. And still the heavenly music floats o'er all the weary world. Above the sad and lowly plains they bend on hovering wings. And ever old of painful sounds, the blessed angel. years of wrong and man for with man is not the love so which they bring oh hush the noise he met of strife and hear the angels sing oh he beneath life's crushing load Prophets bars foretold When with the end of circling years Comes round the age of gold When peace shall roar on the earth Its ages when the spring Oh, will give back the song Which now the age When the angel had left them and returned to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go straight to Bethlehem and see what has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. They hurried off and found both Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. After seeing them, they reported the message they were told about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary was treasuring up all these things in her heart and meditating on them. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had seen and heard, which were just as they had been told. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Good morning and welcome. If I haven't had a chance to meet you, my name is Matt. I uh, have the privilege of being the lead pastor here. I want to extend a special thank you for including us in your Christmas celebrations this morning. Uh, the story that we've heard is simultaneously so familiar and at the same time, it's actually really bizarre. There's the most common of experiences, the birth of a child, and then at the same time, the most incredible, the skies rent asunder by countless singing angels. And this morning, I want to take just a brief moment to remind us of why Christmas, the story of Jesus, is the most wonderful and most unique story ever told. 
I happen to, uh, in light of world events right now, I just happen to be reading recently J.H. Bavink, who is a 20th century Dutch theologian and missionary. So he served for many years in Indonesia, which is a primarily Muslim country, and then returned to teach as a professor at the Free University of Amsterdam and actually lectured at the end of his life by invitation at University of Chicago. And one of his books is The Church Between Temple and mosque. And in a day when conflict has erupted in the Middle East between Israelites and Palestinians that has spilled around the world throughout our own country, in our own city, and at some of our leading universities, the story of Jesus between temple and mosque is so incredibly relevant because it's the story of God becoming human. The Son of God became a human being, a human baby. So, kids, it's so fun to have you in the service this morning. Uh, great job to those who have read. You guys have done an amazing job. Thank you so much. But do you realize, kids, that Jesus knows what it's like to be like you? Jesus was two years old and five years old and seven years old and 12 years old. He knows what it's like to be a teenager whose parents don't understand him. And adults, the good news is that he also grew up and he knows what it's like to be in your shoes. Uh, this past week, Rebecca shared with me uh, a funny little video on Instagram and the person is sitting there and says, you know, I hate that feeling when I'm at work. <laughs> good job. <laughs> well done, that was, a, that was a test. And Jesus knows what it's like to work with people, work with us, and he has that feeling all the time, right? I hate that feeling when I'm trying to teach my followers something because he works with us all the time and we can be pretty difficult people to work with at times. Well, uh, the Scottish theologian Donald McLeod, he actually passed away just this past year, but a few years ago he wrote uh, this. He said, Jesus came into and shared our environment. He dwelt among us. So he uh, also was born not simply uh, a human being, but born in a low condition. That's the reason there's a manger and a flight to Egypt and life in Nazareth. He experienced pain, poverty, and temptation, witnessed squalor and brutality, heard obscenities and profanities, and the hopeless cry of the oppressed. Jesus lived not in sublime detachment, no large estate gave him space. No financial capital guaranteed his daily bread. No personal staff protected him from interruptions. And no power or influence protected him from injustice. He saved us from alongside us. Putting this in today's categories, there's a classmate of mine who's uh, the Reverend Dr. Munter Isaac. And he's actually a Palestinian Christian and he's the Evangelical Lutheran pastor of the church in Bethlehem, which is in the West Bank today. And he was interviewed recently on CNN concerning the cancellation of Christmas celebrations there for fear that violence might spread from Gaza to the West Bank. And he says, the birth of Jesus is the message that God is with us even under the rubble. Because Jesus was born a vulnerable Jewish baby living under occupation, threatened by violence from all sides. And yet the angels sing and celebrate peace. Peace in our world is very fragile. It's often short-lived. Uh, sometimes we know that feeling when the kids finally go down at night. Oh, just, just that moment. And we struggle to live at peace with one another because we are competing with God to be our own kings and queens of our lives or of our worlds or the worlds around us. There's a beautiful depiction of peace in the midst of conflict in the 2006 movie, I think, Children of Men, which is adapted from a, a short story by Philip K. Dick. And in that story, humanity has no future because there are no more children. There haven't been children born for over 20 years. And the drama of the story is that one young woman has conceived and she's carrying a child. Will she survive? Will she and her baby be protected? And she actually eventually gives birth in a war zone, an urban war zone, 
But then as her baby is carried out, the first baby seen in decades, all the combatants stop. And they're amazed. And they look on in wonder. Because the birth of that child meant something new had come into their world and their future is now completely different than what they imagined or feared. Jesus comes to show us another way that peace is not achieved by our own efforts. It's not achieved by building a bigger throne for ourselves, lifting up higher and making sure other people are smaller or lower. But the undeserved gift of God in the person of Jesus is that he leaves a throne in order to come and live among us and to serve us and to work through his life and his death and his resurrection a peace that we might experience now with God and which will one day remake the universe. And so with the angels and with the shepherds of that first Christmas day, as we have done and will continue to do this morning, we sing and celebrate and invite one another to come and see these things which have been told to us. This is the good news in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we continue our worship this morning, we join together in confessing what the church throughout history and around the world confesses about who God is and what God has done for us. So I invite you to stand as we join together to confess the faith. Let us say what we believe. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, we believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, as we come to this table, we receive this uh, day. We receive the person of Jesus as God's gift to us. We come not bringing things that grant us access into him and his presence, but receiving the person of Jesus who brings us into the presence of God. We'll join together in the great Thanksgiving. We have been doing this uh, verbally without song, and today on Christmas Eve, we will join together in song. Uh, I and the band will lead in the portions that are printed in plain and invite you to join in the portions printed in bold. So with you, lift up your hearts now. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our Savior God. It is right. joy we praise you gracious God for you have created heaven and earth made us in your image and kept covenant with us even when we fell into sin we give you thanks for Jesus Christ our Lord who came among us as the word made flesh to show us your glory full of grace and truth 
Therefore, we join our voices with all the saints and angels and the whole creation to proclaim the glory of your name, saying, is full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest, holy, 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 God of power and might, the whole earth is full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. You are holy, O God of majesty, and blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Born in humility, he came to rule over all. Helpless as an infant, he showed the power of your love. Poor in things of the world, he brought the wealth of your grace. Rejected by many, he welcomed all who sought him. In his dying and rising, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. Remembering your gracious acts in Jesus Christ, we take from your creation this bread and wine and joyfully celebrate his dying and rising as we await the day of his coming. With thanksgiving, we offer our very selves to you to be a living and holy sacrifice dedicated to your service. And together we proclaim the mystery of the faith. Your eyes and celebrate Your coming, Lord, be your way To make all things new The death of Christ we proclaim Your eyes and celebrate Your coming, Lord, be your way To make all things new God of all power, send your Holy Spirit upon us that in the sharing of the bread we may share in the body of Christ, that in sharing the cup we may share in his blood. Grant that being joined together in Christ Jesus, we may become united in faith and in all things become mature in the one who is our head. Gather your whole church, O Lord, into the glory of your kingdom. Praise to the Father, praise to the Son, praise to the Spirit, our God, the three in one. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, and after having given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Take and eat of it, all of you, in memory of me. In the same way, after the meal, he took the cup and said, This cup is the new covenant poured out in my blood for the forgiveness of your sins. Take and drink of it, all of you, in memory of me. For as often as we eat this bread and we drink this cup, we proclaim the death of Christ until he comes again. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. A few notes of instruction for how we participate in the Lord's Supper together. Uh, This is the table of Jesus. It's not the table of Liberty Mainline. So if you're somebody who knows him and follows him, you are welcome to join us at this table. Uh, We also, though, sometimes uh, when we give gifts to our children, we say, well, you have to open that one first, and then you can open these other ones, because then they will make sense. We don't want to spoil the surprise. So in that spirit, if you're somebody who does not yet identify as a follower of Jesus, thank you so much for joining us today and spending the morning with us. Uh, We don't want you to feel pressured to participate in this part of the service. So the ways that you can participate are either by uh, using the prayers, remaining seated, and using the prayers there to guide your time in this next part of our worship. Uh, Or if you come forward, you can simply cross your arms instead of taking the elements uh, and be an honor to pray a blessing on on you. Uh, In addition, we have lots of little ones, and uh, we usually wait till they are able to profess faith for themselves before they participate in the Lord's table. So Ian is going to be over to the side. They are welcome to come forward, and he would be honored to pray, pray God's blessing on them as they come forward. Uh, Also, uh, as you come forward to participate, you can just tear off a piece of bread 
and you can dip it into one of the cups. The taller cup is wine and the shorter cup is grape juice. And we also have individually packaged gluten-free elements. So just ask for those uh, if you would like those. With that, I'm going to ask Rebecca to come forward to help me serve.
of Bethlehem, descend on us, we pray. Cast out our sins and enter in, be born in us today. We hear the Christmas angel to pray And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. He is with God in the beginning. All things were created through Him, and apart from Him, not one thing was created that has been created. In Him was life, and that life was the light of men. That light shines in the darkness, and yet the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify about the light, so that all might believe through Him. He was not the light, but He came to testify about the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was created through him, and yet the world did not recognize him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, he gave them the right to be children of God, to those who believe in his name, who were born not of natural descent, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of the man, but of God. The word, beca the word became flesh and dwelt among us. We observed his glory, the glory as the one and only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. As we get close to the end of our service, we're going to have a candle lighting during the next song. You should have candles that were on your seat. Uh, there are probably some others and extras scattered around if you can't uh, see one at this moment. Uh, but as we do this one important point of instruction, we are so grateful for the space. We don't want to uh, send it up in flames. Uh, so as the candle comes down the center aisle, if the people on the end, if your candle is not lit, you tilt your candle for it to be lit by the candle that's, that uh, is a flame. And then as you go down the aisle, if your candle is not lit, you tilt uh, to light your candle, okay? Uh, and then we'll be singing Silent Night as uh, we uh, light the candles.
And before we go, one reminder, one announcement. There will be Christmas Eve caroling at the Brunies on Carol Lane and Berwyn. There is information about that in the inside back uh, cover of your folder. So I invite you uh, to come and join, participate in that if you're coming and are able to bring something to share. That would be much appreciated. But with that, I invite you to receive now the blessing of God's word to you and over you. May the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the obedience of Joseph and Mary, and the peace of the Christ child be yours this Christmas. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Yeah.